very early this morning. NASA started paving the way for the return to the moon. It's the first phase of a new era of lunar exploration called Artemis. NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy joins us now with more on this historic mission. Good morning to you. What an exciting morning for you. Good morning. It certainly is. It was an amazing launch. So tell me about Artemis, and I, I understand this is an uncrewed launch, so no, no crew on board. Um, but what's, what's the mission for this first flight? Well, this is a test flight. So we are wringing out the capability of this huge moon rocket and the spacecraft that is the only spacecraft capable of carrying humans to deep space and return them safely to Earth. And so we are testing uh, this system out. We're gonna ring it out. We're gonna push it much harder than we would if we had a crew on board so that we can really see the limits of the system. We're gonna send it all the way to the moon uh, and this spacecraft will go further beyond the moon than we've ever sent a human capable spacecraft, 40,000 miles. And it will circle uh, around the far side of the moon and it will come back in and demonstrate the Orion spacecraft capability to come back on a Mach 32 high G entry and safely protect astronauts. And then we'll know we're ready to send humans. So you wanna give this everything you've got then to make sure that it is safe for people on board because a Canadian will be on board um, uh, in 2024, I understand. That's right, that is um, that is the plan. One of the things that I think is beautiful about Artemis is that we are going with our international partners. And of course, uh, Canada is one of our oldest and strongest partners in space. I myself operated the uh, robot arm on the space shuttle and the space station uh, that was uh, built in Canada. And uh, Canada will again be providing robotics for the gateway orbiting um, laboratory spacecraft, um, sort of a, more of a like a logistics cache around the moon and uh, we'll be sending a Canadian astronaut on Artemis II. That's very cool. And of course, the Canadarm3 is gonna be part of that lunar gateway as well. But that's, of course, all once this testing is complete for Artemis I. So how, how long is the, uh, is the spacecraft going to be up there right now? Yes, this is a, a pretty good ringing it out kind of mission. It'll be up for 25 pl uh, and a half days. And then we'll bring it back uh, to demonstrate its capability to come back through the Earth's atmosphere. And we'll land and recover it out of uh, San Diego, California. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a pretty lengthy mission. We've got some very exciting things going on. We've got science as a part of it. We're, as we speak, some CubeSats are deploying. Uh, that will be doing science in the area. And uh, some, some fun experiments, including um, the capability to talk to Alexa on board Orion. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so, so tell me about, uh, you said it, it's gonna push much farther than we've ever gone before. How else does it differ from the Apollo missions? Well, I think the most significant difference for Artemis is that for Apollo, we were proving that it was possible to be done, uh, to cross the ocean of space between us and the moon, uh, and then safely bring a human being home. This time, we're planning to stay. So uh, the Orion spacecraft is more capable. It can carry uh, more people, more cargo, but it's also capable of staying in space for six months at a time while a crew goes down to the surface of the moon. So it's really the beginning of our exploration of the solar system with human beings. What an exciting time in history today is. Pam, thank you very much for joining us. Pam Melroy from NASA. Thank you.